Now that I have all of these hot coals ready to go, I'm going to go ahead and start cooking my rabbit. So the first thing I need to do is um, find, I like to use Y sticks and get a good height on them. Here's another Y stick. I'm gonna come around to the other side of the fire. I want it to be about yay high. I'll go ahead and make a cut. can use my rose cut here. And come out with a nice sharp end, right? And a rose cut. Well, not a perfect example, but looks like a flower. Stick this end in the dirt here. And go ahead and utilize the anus. Put my stick through that hole. Come out through the rib cage, up into the throat. Spread everything nice and wide. And I'll probably adjust this in a moment, but you know, for now this is the idea. I'm gonna center it more over the coals and I'll just very slowly rotate this animal. You don't wanna just burn the outside of it that doesn't cook the internal meat. So just like an oven, you know, it's a slow process. You wanna keep that heat fairly mild, but hot, but lower and uh, rotate it like a hot dog. So now we'll go ahead and cook our rabbit and eat it. Check, check, cut. <laughs> uh, actually, I have more things to say. With animals, oftentimes when you're cooking them on the fire like this, you want to open up their bodies so that you can get to the center of their body cavity and be able to get to the inside of their arms. And then when you rotate them to the back to be able to get to the outside of their arms. I didn't do that with this rabbit. It's okay, it's gonna cook just fine as well. Um, this is also something you might do if you fillet a fish Right, same idea with the fish though. You're going through the anus, out the mouth, or you know, the throat or whatever. And then you can just take some little sticks and open up the flesh so that it's splayed out um, like a proper filet. So this will take some time and I'll continue to watch it and rotate it. Um, check on my coals, make sure that they remain hot. If not, I'll heat up the fire again. And what I'll normally do is actually make the fire in a different part of the pit and then bring those hot coals over. I really don't want to flame underneath this. It's not the best way to cook an animal. My rabbit is just about cooked, and I mentioned that I often like to travel with pemmican already pre-made and sometimes with some bouillon for some salt and broth uh, and also with some flour. So what I'd like to show you is how I'm going to make a meat pocket, right? Kind of a meat calzone um, and also how you can just make a piece of flat bread. Uh, I also always travel with a salt rock and this is how I'm going to flavor everything, add a little extra salt. So I'll begin with that. I'm going to take some kind of a hard rock and go ahead and hammer off a little bit of salt. And what I'm going to do is take on some flour, just like a handful, put it in my cup. Do one more. I'm going to take that salt. You can add as much salt as you want. Maybe I get a little bit more. Now I'm going to add some water to my flour and salt mixture. 
The key to this is to add a little bit of water at a time. If you add too much water, then you get really gooey dough, which means that you have to add more flour, which potentially means you're using more of a resource than you wanted to for just that day and that meal if you're sort of in a situation where you're low on food. Do this with your hands, you can do this with a stick. And I'm just actually going to add a little bit more flour so I can make a little bit larger of a calzone. You hear my rabbit sizzling, which is a good thing. I know that that meat is really cooking. Just what I want. Ever in question, overcook. And come out with a piece of dough, right? Pretty cool. I'm gonna make it into a bit of a ball. Flatten it out. And I'll utilize my little sandstone slab, cooking slab. And maybe put a little flour down. It's like the home cooking network, right? I'm going to take my rabbit off. Stick and the rabbit are still quite hot. Always best to let these things cool, but what we do for film. <clears throat> I'm gonna take some of this meat Just do a little bit for now. Add it to the inside or the center of my dough ball. To be another time, you could add some more salt. Fold it over the top. And then I'll pinch the edges, just like a calzone. Looks like. And now I'm going to go ahead and cook it actually straight onto the coals. In the meantime, I'm going to try some rabbit off of the actual rabbit. <laughs> See how it tastes. It tastes really good. Thank you, rabbit for feeding me, I was hungry. I've been being made fun of all morning because my stomach, my stomach is growling so loudly that you can actually hear it through my microphone. So I really appreciate getting to eat today. <laughs> mm. Gamber B rolling. All right, in five, four, three. Mm. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Action! <laughs> my bad. Mm. <laughs> All right, so, excuse me, <laughs> excuse me. All right, count the three in your head. Now that I've had my pita on one side of the coals, I'm gonna check it to see if it's hardened, kind of like pita bread, and flip it. So we'll check it out. And it is pretty hard, so I'm gonna flip it over. 
hard as in it kind of knocks a little bit. Make sure that I'm on nice hot coals. And you don't have to worry about all of the charcoal, you know, influencing the taste of it. Once it's cooked, you can just brush it on off and, um, and you're back to just your bread. So don't fret about putting it on ashy charcoal. So my rabbit tastes delicious and we've concurred that it is sort of a cross between chicken and turkey, light meat, uh, fairly bland in flavor. A little salt is always nice to add to things that are a little bland, which I feel like is a personal assessment of mine is that a lot of these really bland tasting meats are because these animals are eating so healthfully. <laughs> They're eating exactly what they should be, which is a lot of, you know, grasses or little things are eating berries or nuts or whatever. They don't have a lot of extra flavoring because they're just eating natural foods. So I find that to be a good sign that this tastes pretty bland. I don't know if there's anything scientific about that, but that's how I feel. And a lot of times your psychology dictates sort of your biochemical, um, physical makeup, right? And how we feel about our bodies and how we react to different things. If you think you're gonna puke by eating something, you're probably more likely to puke. If you think, ah, oh, well, this, what an adventure to see what this tastes like. Maybe I won't like it, and I'll spit it out, or maybe it won't sit well, but I'm really excited because it's gonna be good to eat. You're probably less likely to get sick. I'll leave it, well. Just for time's sake, we'll say it's done. Nice little golden touches on it. Um, when I knock on it, it's kind of hard. Uh, I'll cut it in half, but I'm still gonna give it a moment before I actually eat it because it's super hot. But we'll just see what it looks like inside. Yeah, it's not quite done, but now the best thing to do, of course, is to add greens to this as well. If I had something like watercress or stinging nettle, I would add those to the pita pocket and then those juices would come out and this whole thing would be like dripping down my mouth when I eat it. And that really makes a meal. So, you know, you can get gourmet out here, no problem. You're totally laughing at me. So I'm like <laughs> totally serious right now. It's really good. <laughs> I mean, it's no like, you know, pizza hut or something, but whatever. Okay. <clears throat> Close up. You can see it's not, the dough's not quite cooked. Sorry. You can see that the dough is not quite cooked all the way, but, um, you know, it's good enough. It's not like there are raw eggs in this. I'm not worried about it making me sick. You can eat raw dough. It's just flour and water. Here we go. I'm going to eat it now. <laughs> It's delicious. Mm. So you can see why bringing flour is such a wonderful idea out here. I've got my meat that I caught naturally. There are a lot of things you can procure flour from, a lot of roots and seeds and nuts and stuff like that, but it takes a long time to get enough of them to really have a proper amount of flour. But now I have my carbohydrates and my protein um, and hopefully a little bit of fat. Rabbits aren't very fatty, but there are other animals that are. So that combination of things with some berries and some greens is a full, well-rounded diet. Uh, a lot of people are on the paleo diet to lose weight and such like that. Um, they should be on it for their health. Uh, it's a really healthy, clean way to eat and live. Uh, it tastes good. I think that's it for my eating segment. I'm gonna down this because <laughs> I'm hungry and then we'll uh, get to our next lesson. <coughs> I would hold on to that. <laughs> uh, me? <laughs> Are you saying hold on to it? Yeah, yeah, just stick it in your mouth and hold on to it. No, I was, I your sneezed. Sneeze. I was, okay. yeah, I was like, uh -huh. hold on to the sneeze forever. Mm. Cut. Pretty sure I ran. actually ran cotillion when I was a little girl, which is like a formal etiquette where you like go in with like white gloves and learn how to shake hands and, to, you know, introduce each other and go to dance and stuff. And it's kind of appalling to eat like this. Sorry, Mom. <laughs> but whatever.